China's State Administration for Market Regulation, or SAMR, has recently imposed administrative penalties in more than 20 cases of illegal concentration of operators in China's online sector under the anti-monopoly law. The penalties involve companies such as Tencent, Alibaba, Meituan, and Didi. Many observers are concerned that this move by the Chinese government will not only fail to protect Chinese companies and businesses from healthy competition, but will also fail to effectively protect consumers' interest. It will instead inhibit the innovation and development of private companies in China, leading to a flattening of private companies and potentially spilling over into China's overall economic development. So why did the CCP launch an anti-monopoly storm? On July 10th, China's anti-monopoly regulator, SAMR, issued fines in eight cases involving the illegal implementation of operator concentration by companies under Didi, six cases involving Alibaba, five cases involving Tencent, two cases involving Sunning, and one case involving Meituan. The cases all violated Article 21 of the Anti-Monopoly Law of the People's Republic of China and constituted illegal implementation of concentration of operators, which is a legal term referring to the merger between operators. On August 6, the Wall Street Journal reported that China's regulatory body would find Meituan, China's largest food delivery platform. The fine would be approximately U.S. $1 billion in a few weeks for allegedly abusing its dominant market position by imposing a two-for-one monopolistic practice whereby merchants who work with Meituan cannot work with other platforms. This practice has forced merchants to choose sides and has harmed both merchants and competitors by preventing them from selling their products on rival platforms. According to Trust Data, an internet data monitoring platform, MyTwin's market share in China's takeout market reached 68.2% in the second quarter of 2020. It surpassed second place Elemi, that has just 25.4% of the market. China's regulatory body began an investigation into MyTwin's alleged monopolistic practices in April 2021. LMA is owned by Alibaba, while Meituan, which is 20% owned by Tencent, is a recognized Tencent system company. He Tencent, China's online giant, was originally the target of this wave of regulations. A few days ago, the Communist Party's official media criticized online games, calling them spiritual opium. It named one of Tencent's games, after which Tencent's share price plunged. At the same time, Tencent's forecast price-to-earnings ratio also fell to a three-year low. In the face of the uncertain regulatory outlook, investors in communist China and abroad also began to sell Tencent. The goddess of investing in the U.S., Kathy Wood, her fund and other Chinese public funds have reduced their holdings in Tencent. A July 24th announcement by China's SAMR showed that Tencent was ordered by Beijing to relinquish its exclusive music streaming rights within 30 days. It was also fined 500,000 renminbi, or about 75,000 US dollars. The notice stated that Tencent's acquisition of a stake in China Music Corporation in July 2016 constituted the illegal implementation of an operator concentration. The penalty appears to confirm previous rumors. 
On July 12th, Reuters, citing two sources familiar with the matter, reported exclusively that Chinese authorities had asked the music streaming company of Tencent Holdings to relinquish its exclusive streaming rights. Otherwise, it would face a fine of at least US $1.5 billion, which would be reduced to about $75,000 if Tencent agreed to relinquish its rights. Tencent has been punished three times before, involving a total of nine cases, and has been fined a total of 4.5 million renminbi, or about USD 675,000. The USD $1 billion fine imposed on MyTwin is the second largest fine issued by the Chinese government to a private company in 2021. Alibaba Group, on the other hand, ranked first. In December 2020, after opening an investigation into Alibaba's abuse of market dominance in the domestic retail platform services market, the SAMR issued an administrative penalty against Alibaba in April 2021, imposing a fine, which is 4% of its 2019 domestic sales, 457.512 billion renminbi, or USD 703.61 billion. The amount comes to 18.228 billion renminbi, or approximately USD 2.8 billion dollars. This is a record high in the history of penalties imposed on Chinese companies. Alibaba's troubles are not over. Recently, a sexual assault scandal at Alibaba broke out on China's social media and the Communist Party's official media has taken a rare stand for the victimized employee. On August 9th, the People's Daily posted an article stating that capital must not control the media and Weibo, China's equivalent of Twitter, must not become a tool for certain interest groups to manipulate public opinion. The article also noted that at a time when anti-monopoly is an established state policy, if someone still wants to delete articles and suppress hot searches through public relations means, they are doomed to become victims of their own cleverness. The article offered a reminder, don't presume one is too big to fail. This article is meant to target the Alibaba group. From public information, it can be seen that as of 2019, Alibaba holds 30.4% of shares in Sina Weibo and has 15.9% of voting rights. That makes it the second largest shareholder of Weibo. To the outside world, the Beijing government's recent crackdown is perplexing. One of the main reasons for this is that it is probably an internal communist crackdown on dissidents. Overseas Chinese media reports that insiders have revealed that the companies being hit are those backed by the forces of former CCP leader Jiang Zemin. Alibaba and Tencent developed and grew when Jiang was in power and are closely intertwined with the political and business landscapes of Jiang's powerful interests. Alibaba is backed by the capital operations of Jiang's grandson a background that is more widely known as we introduced in our episode on March 27th. According to outside sources, Jack Ma has close ties to elites at the World Economic Forum who share a common idea and has been a supporter of globalization wanting to bring about a big world-class government to oversee the world which would weaken the power of sovereign governments. With the support of China's powerful Jiang clique, plus international consortia and elites, Jack Ma has the courage to stand up to Xi Jinping's administration. In fact, Tencent is just as closely tied to the Jiang faction. According to a report by Price Waterhouse Coopers, or PwC, Tencent ranks 7th among the world's top 100 listed companies with a market capitalization of US $753 billion as of March 31st, while Alibaba ranks 9th with US $615 billion. Tencent's financial technology and enterprise services, according to the report, 
saw its full-year revenue grow by 26% to U.S. $128.086 billion in 2020, accounting for 27% of the total revenue. In other words, finance has become another extremely fast-growing area under Tencent, in addition to games and internet advertising. Overseas media have reported that Jiang Zemin's niece joined Tencent in 2011 and is in charge of government affairs. In particular, she has taken the lead in deep cooperation with China's Ministry of State Security and Ministry of Public Security. She has also set up workstations with the Ministry of Public Security and the 610 office, the agency in charge of persecuting Falun Gong. Together, they are deeply involved in Tencent's communication data business to filter and monitor data. If you can read Chinese, you will see that Tencent frequently deletes all comments unfavorable to the Jiang family and intentionally spreads negative news about other CCP leaders such as Wen Jiaobao, Li Peng, and Xi Jinping. However, in public, Tencent's boss, Ma Huatang, looks relatively low-key. He seems better at pleasing and cooperating with the current government than Alibaba's Jack Ma. Within a few days after Tencent was reviewed on April 13th, the company announced that it would invest an initial 50 billion renminbi or USD 7.72 billion. It would invest in a sustainable social value innovation strategy and plan to set up a business unit to explore basic science, education innovation, rural revitalization, carbon neutrality, senior citizen technology, and digitalization of public welfare, among other areas. These projects that Tencent wants to explore are actually things that Xi Jinping wants to do. Ma Huatong is actually spending 50 billion renminbi to show his loyalty to the CCP. Also, earlier this year, the Wall Street Journal reported that sources said one of the CCP's demands of Alibaba's Ant Group was for Ant to share data with companies such as Credit Rating, which is actually controlled by the central bank, but Ant Group never handed over the data. Ma Huatong's WeChat Pay, while also refusing to hand over user data at first, has since turned it over. This may be the reason why Tencent was fined slightly less by the Xi Jinping authorities than Alibaba. But the CCP's internal struggles cannot be open to the Chinese public. Therefore, the Communist Party's anti-monopoly storms are likely to lead to confusion and chaos among private enterprises in China. The sky-high fines issued to Alibaba and Maituan in the name of anti-monopoly have made other private enterprises fearful. Some economists believe that the Chinese government's anti-monopoly treatment of Maituan and Alibaba, while somewhat justified, may exacerbate the negative, insecure psychological state of private enterprises. The key to the future development of China's economy is whether private enterprises and entrepreneurs can continue to support the country's economic development. She accepted Wang Huaning from Jiang's camp during his complicated struggle with the Jiang faction. Wang is in charge of the ideological propaganda of the CCP. He has advocated and helped Xi push the CCP to the radical left, stepping on the gas to bring China back to the Cultural Revolution era. Since then, Xi has been nicknamed by Chinese netizens as the chief accelerator, the master of accelerating the disintegration and collapse of the CCP. Suppressing the development of private enterprises may be what Xi's administration has planned for the future. Monopoly is a product of the market economy, but China is currently pursuing a power economy with state-owned capital. Therefore, China's anti-monopoly law has taken a path that no market economy in the world has taken. The 2021 Fortune 500 list, released on August 2nd, shows that Chinese state-owned enterprises occupy three of the top ten positions. Second is State Grid, fourth is CNPC, and fifth is Sinopec. A total of 135 countries from mainland China, including Hong Kong, are on the list, the highest number among all countries for the second consecutive year. This list shows that Chinese state-owned enterprises, or SOEs, 
can monopolize to occupy an important position globally. The monopoly of state-owned enterprises has always been a prominent issue in China. All fields and leading industries are monopolized by SOEs, including banking, finance, and so on. It is a legal monopoly in reality, a monopoly formally authorized by the government. In a market economy that is not under the rule of law, the Chinese government's administration faces a dilemma if it is to oppose monopoly under some legal provision. Why does the government not oppose monopoly by state-owned enterprises? But the CCP does not seem to care whether they are able to answer such questions. The CCP is willing to sacrifice the development of China's private enterprises, its overall economic development, and it doesn't mind being in the middle of numerous crises, as long as it maintains a firm grip on its power over the people and enterprises in communist China.